A not-so-grand beginning for the Cardinals in Toronto against the Blue Jays. That would mean that the Cardinals will likely be focused on pitching this trade deadline, so we'll discuss that, as well as the still possibility of a Juan Soto trade, and we're starting to see more f- concrete packages form and our thoughts on those packages. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals. Your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, hello, hello. Once again, welcome into Locked on Cardinals. I'm J.D. Haffron. That is Lucas Smith. We are your host for Locked on Cardinals, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter at J.D. Sports Radio. Lucas at LJ Fastball. Follow the podcast at Locked on Cardinals. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts. You'll find Locked on Cardinals, a show serving Cardinal Nation and getting the best fans in baseball. All the info about the birds on the bat that you can handle. Uh, Last night, not the uh, greatest of showings for the Cardinals up north in Toronto. Um, Man, they get thumped by the Blue Jays 10 to 3, Lucas. And you knew the offense would be less potent without Goldie and Arenado. You also knew the Blue Jays could hit a little bit. And that's exactly what they did. 10 runs on 14 hits, three of those home runs. Your thoughts? It played out pretty much as, as we thought it might, right? You, you saw that the positive stuff of Dylan Carlson early, he had a monster home run. You saw Albert get in on the fray a little bit as well as he had an RBI knock in the third inning. So it started out okay. Andre Pallante was good, not great. But then you see Jordan Hicks, Junior Fernandez come in, and that's when the wheels came off the bus, if you will. And we'll talk more specifics on what this means in segment number two, but this does highlight the need for pitching right on this team in the starting rotation and in the bullpen. There's no question about it. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a rough start for Palante. He gets up, uh, gives up three runs on five hits in the first inning of Vladdy Guerrero jr. Gets that big fly, just two batters into the game. And uh, the blue Jays get the lead after the uh, Carlson home run that you mentioned in the first settle down after that though, he throws three scoreless innings and allows just two hits, which is great, but you fall into a hole early and without your big boppers, you you feel like it's going to be kind of tough to come back, but, the Cardinals were resilient. Uh, they got the game tied back up in the third inning. New Bar gets that leadoff walk. You get an Edmund single. Carlson, another RBI single. He, he's been hitting very, very well. Very, uh, very clutch recently out of Dylan Carlson. And then with two outs, Albert beats the shift with that, that rocket smash uh, to the right side and uh, ties that game up. Albert making history again last night, by the way. That was his uh, 3,027th game passing Stan Musial and Eddie Murray for sixth all-time in Major League Baseball history. So kudos to one Albert Pujols. But um, you mentioned the game goes from kind of good to bad quickly in the sixth inning with Jordan Hicks in the game. And just the random wildness that seemingly pops up out of nowhere from him, and it does him in again. He goes one, two, three in the fifth, and you're like, all right, there's the Hicks we we like. (laughs) This is the one we we, we expect to see. Then in the sixth, the, the damage is all done with two outs, too. Uh, Chapman gets that RBI single, then back-to-back walks by Hicks, loads him up for Springer, and that's when Junior Fernandez comes into the game, and let's be honest, that's a tough spot for for anyone to take over in, isn't it? Incredibly. I mean, we, we saw Andre Pallante get put in this spot a little earlier this season as well, the base is loaded, then give up a grand slam, but walked in two runs. Right, so this yeah. is not an easy spot for anybody, let alone these young guys. Pilate being a rookie, Fernandez, he might still be classified as a rookie, depending on how many innings. It's kind of weird. But regardless, it, it's a tough situation for anybody, let alone somebody that is so young. And with, with Junior Fernandez, we were kind of talking about this off the air, if you will, before you we recorded, that we've been pleasantly surprised with what Fernandez has given the Cardinals this season. You know, He was scoreless for a short while there. His ERA was looking pretty good. But we've started to see this coming of, of the Junior Fernandez that we did know of the, the struggles of Junior Fernandez. Not walking as many people, but still struggling all the same. Grand Slam was not the last runs he gave up. He gave up more runs later. So this is not necessarily a huge shock that Fernandez struggled last night. Uh, maybe it's a, it's a shock just because of how good he's been this season. But it's not like this is 
I don't know, Ryan Helsley all of a sudden giving up eight earned runs, right? Like, we, we've seen this before from Fernandez. It's unfortunate that it manifested itself on a day when the Cardinals pitching needed him to not do it. <laughs> um, yeah. But at the end of the day, we told you guys yesterday that this team, being the Blue Jays, they can freaking hit. And this yeah. is a team that is arguably as hot as it's ever been this season. They started out on a wrong foot. They're, they're swinging it well now. Got to give some credit to where credit is due, and credit is due to this offense. It's a lethal lineup, everybody. I mean, without the Yankees doing historic things in the AL East, this is a division-winning type of team, right? So we can't forget that either. And, the, you know, at least on the field, the players that were there, the better team won last night, J.D., just plain yeah. and simple. Yeah, uh, I've said it before. Sometimes I know we expect our pitchers to come in and never give up a hit and never give up a run, but sometimes the batters win. It it does happen. Um, when it comes to the bullpen, I, 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 this shows another need that this team could use another arm or two back there that you can rely on. I mean, you you get a situation like this, two outs, bases loaded, George Springer, great hitter. You hope you can you know put out that fire. Um, but Junior comes in and he, and he immediately falls behind 3-0, and which you just can't do. You just can't do that no. against a, a hitter of Springer's caliber. And then he rips that 3-2 sinker. He fights back. He, he actually should have walked him. I don't know what Springer was swinging at on that 3-0 pitch. I mean, he, he fouls it off for some reason. I think it, it even took Danny Mack for off guard. He was like, I'm uh, swinging on 3-0 and at that for, for some odd reason. But uh, – it worked out for him because he rips a 3-2 sinker that just tailed back over the heart of the plate, knocks it over the wall in left center for the grand slam. And that was basically the game. I mean, you were one strike away from escaping with just one run scoring, but Springer wins that battle, makes it 8-3. to three. You mentioned Fernandez gives up two more in the next inning, including another home run by Alejandro Kirk, and the Cardinals fall 10-3 to three last night in Toronto. We got maybe a little bit of excitement when Tyler O'Neill at the end of the yeah. game came very, very close to uh, hitting a grand slam of his own. Uh, both of us uh, said to each other that he clearly doesn't work out enough, and nope. that's that's an issue. <laughs> he's, he's skipping arm day. He's not strong enough. He's got warning track power. That, that's all it comes down to. It. JD. Oh, he's just yeah. not strong enough. <laughs> all, all, all those muscles that you see, they're fake. It's a false advertising. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I would not but, be challenging um, him to an arm wrestling contest anytime soon. I'll put it that way. I don't no, want to get no, embarrassed on <laughs> He could probably lift more with like a finger than we can with our entire <laughs> upper bodies. Like he's uh he's a massive. Well, okay, gun show out of Lucas here on a, a Wednesday. Bit. There you go. There you go. You've been lifting a little bit, but uh yeah, yeah. so uh, uh, a game where the score at the end of it looks like it was just a blowout the entire time and it really wasn't until that sixth inning, but it just shows again uh the glaring weakness that the Cardinals have as far as uh pitching goes. Um, you know, all the trade speculation about Juan Soto. I, I don't think if Juan Soto is in that game in that lineup, that matters. I think they still lose because you give up ten runs to uh, a very good lineup, a potent lineup, as you mentioned. So uh, pitching obviously is uh, going to be a need for this team, and we'd like to focus on that a little bit here today. We know everybody wants to talk Juan Soto, but there's a lot of people out there that believe that pitching is where the Cardinals should be putting their focus at this trade deadline. So uh, coming up here in just a few, we're going to actually give you some of the arms that are available according to reports that uh, the team should be interested in acquiring at the trade deadline, which is creeping up here real, real fast, August 2nd. So uh, we'll get to that here in just a moment. But first, if you're ready to pop the big question or perhaps your significant other has a birthday coming up or it's an anniversary or just a special occasion in general, it's time to find that piece of jewelry that is as unique as she is, but do it with the modern convenience of online shopping. And you can do that at BlueNile.com. Now, if it's an engagement ring you're looking for, BlueNile.com should be your first stop because of the convenience. The, the days of having to drive around to different stores, it's over. You don't have to do that anymore. BlueNile.com has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as the setting style. Their bench jewelers will then handcraft her the perfect one-of-a-kind engagement ring that she's always dreamed about. And that's what you want. When you pop the big question, you just want to see that smile and the excitement on that on that woman's face. So it's not just about engagement rings, though, at BlueNile.com. They've got you covered when it comes to all fine jewelry with their experts on hand 24-7 via phone or chat to help you get that memorable gift that can fit your budget. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And going on now, they have the Blue Nile anniversary sale. Save up to 40% on classic fine jewelry pieces and 25% 
on engagement ring settings. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. And if you're like me, you sometimes procrastinate. So if you need your special purchase fast, in most cases, Blue Nile can deliver overnight. And if it's not perfect, no problem. 100% satisfaction guarantee with free shipping and return. Shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. St. Louis Cardinals will hopefully be active at the trade deadline. And while I won't be here, that hopefully means that J.D. will be active at the trade deadline as well. Thanks to you again, everybody, for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. The MLB trade deadline, again, is next Tuesday, August the 2nd. Locked on MLB has all the breakdowns. Locked on Cardinals will have rapid reaction to any news that is made, including up until the deadline. So subscribe now. To Locked on Cardinals on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts and get notified when each episode premieres. We are expecting some fireworks by the trade deadline by the St. Louis Cardinals, whether it's Soto or pitching. And that's what we're going to talk about right now, the possibility of trading for Juan Soto. A lot of discussion has been uh, has been made. In fact, a lot, some people are sick of us and everybody else talking about it because they don't think it's realistic. But a lot of people realize that pitching – is really where the Cardinals need some help, which is uh, why many think that trading for Soto is a dumb idea when it doesn't fix what seems to be your biggest and most glaring problem. So we've compiled a list of some of the more popular names that appear to be available at the trade deadline on August 2nd that could improve this team, not only in the starting rotation, but also in the bullpen. So uh, we're going to throw out some names here, some possible solutions for the rotation. We'll start there first. Um, Names that should be familiar to you right now after uh, the last, I don't know, two weeks (laughs) of the show, because it is one of the biggest things that we need to be talking about is who can they bring in to to make things easier for them as they try to make a push towards the playoffs. Uh, One of the uh, names right off the top is Madison Bumgarner of the Diamondbacks. Some people think uh, he's not good enough. He's too expensive uh, with uh, the pluses and minuses there. Dude, left-hander veteran, proven winner i i think he'd be a good fit i think you think that way as well don't you lucas i do and and it's real quickly just not to you know defend ourselves but it's we're not just like knee-jerk reaction is to oh all of a sudden we need pitching we did a solo episode on the Juan Soto trade packages last week we still have recognized since that moment that this pitching need is there like we've always Mm -hmm. known that it's just becoming more and more glaring since the Juan Soto trade rumors have started to speculate right after the All-Star game. So I just wanted to say that like, this is not just a knee-jerk thing. We've spent time no. talking about this throughout and, the throughout And, and, and in all well. honesty, the, the pitching need has been there since Flaherty went down, to be honest with you, because you already had Matt's beat up, and then Flaherty mm-hmm. goes down, who you're hoping – I mean, that's your ace. That's the guy you were really hoping would come back and be the Jack Flaherty of a couple years ago, and then he's gone immediately. Since that moment, pitching has been a problem. There's also an argument to say that pitching has been the need since Flirty went down the first time. But that's a discussion <laughs> yeah. for a different day. No. But back back to Bumgarner, yeah, I, I think that for, for me, what draws me to Bumgarner is the intangible aspects of the winner, right? He, mm. he, like, this is one of the best postseason pitchers of all time, and that is not an understatement. Part of, he was a key part in the Diamondback, or not Diamondbacks, in the Giants dynasty of the 10 uh, 12 and 14 world championships team championship teams this dude knows how to win he knows how to get it done he's somebody that will likely benefit as most of these pitchers would from the cardinals defense the infield and outfield defense keep the ball in the park keep the ball on the ground you're going to get out with this team even as banged up as they are even without goldman arenado this is still a pretty good defensive team, J.D., so I think that Bumgarner, for me, what, what draws so much interest there is the intangibles. I know the contract yeah. might not be super team-friendly for his age and what he's giving you, but if you're looking for stability in the rotation, if you're looking for innings, Bumgarner can mm-hmm. give you those innings. Yeah, and that's one thing that uh, people are harping on as far as uh, reporters and stuff uh, nationally, saying that the, what the Cardinals need is uh, not just – good pitchers but people who are reliable that they Mm -hmm. can have that every fifth day that they're going to be there and show up Uh, that's one thing that people are saying is a good thing about Patrick Corbin is the fact that he's not dealing with injuries he's just not pitching very well and maybe there's something that Maddox and the magical claw can help him out with and get things fixed up but uh, um, he's there every day he's there every fifth day and you don't have to 
do these bullpen games or anything like that, you can you can rely on a guy like Madison Bumgarner to show up. Uh, we mentioned the for the A's Frankie Montas. Uh, we went into that yesterday. Uh, the Reds have two pitchers, Luis Castillo and Tyler Malley, that are clearly available. I think the Luis Castillo idea is. Um, I, I think the Cardinals will get outbid for him. Mm-hmm. First off, I don't know if the Reds would ever trade with the Cardinals in the first place unless they got something massive in return. Uh, Tyler Malley is, a, is an interesting name. Uh, your thoughts on Malley? Shut down the Cardinals over the weekend in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's for sure. I mean, he, he seems to always pitch well. He seems to be kind of one of those guys that just finds ways to get out, get out, yeah. right? And I think that when you look at this trade deadline, when you look at the starting pitching market, there's not like one ace out there. Right, in my opinion, like there's not a David Price of 2016 or 17 when he went to Toronto. There's not a Justin Verlander of the 2017 at like that just goes over that just makes that team just like instant favorites, right? So when you look at the pitching market, I think that for the Cardinals to be successful in it, they need to make multiple trades. Right, like if they just got Bumgarner or they just got Syndergaard or they just got Monta, so they just got say Tariq Skubal, who just got made available by the Tigers, according to reports. Like if just one of those trades happens, like like by itself, Not that's, that, that's a loss, right? Mm-hmm. Like a, a trade for Soto is a win for the offense, obviously. But there's not even like I don't. I would argue there's there's not a number one out there. You could argue Castillo, mm-hmm. but is he a number one on the Yankees behind Nestor Cortez and Garrett Cole? I don't know. Probably not, right? So that's the thing about the starting pitching market is that you're going to need to make multiple trades, which then makes it more complicated or as complicated as the Soto trade because who do you give up to who, right? Like if Mm -hmm. multiple teams want the Mason win or the multiple teams want a Nolan Gorman, you got to make sure you pick and choose you're getting the most value out of that trade, right? So Mm -hmm. I know I just threw out a bunch of names, but I just just want to get to that point that the starting pitching market – is a little large, but there's not like top heavy arms around. So you're going to need to make yeah. multiple trades. Yeah. Yeah. Luis Castillo, the closest thing that you have to an elite pitcher. And then it's just kind of a, another tier below that. Um, you mentioned some of the names like Syndergaard. Uh, you've got Jose Quintana. People are, are checking in on him with the Pirates. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a name that has popped up recently that I, I'm interested in. I just don't know what it would take to get him away from the Marlins is Pablo Lopez, who who spun another gem last night uh, against the Reds. Gosh, he would look good in a Cardinals uniform, wouldn't he, Lucas? Who wouldn't? Just first of all, best uniforms in baseball, in my opinion, really close. But yes, <laughs> Pablo Lopez would be. And they said that, you know, John Heyman reporting that they're trading or willing to trade everybody not named Alcantara. I saw a funny reply to that tweet, by the way, that said, breaking news, uh, Sandy Alcantara changes his name. thought that was kind of funny. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> Pablo Lopez would certainly be an arm that I think would be made available. I mean, yes, the Marlins are only, what, five or six games out, like we talked about yesterday, but they're not going to buy. Like, I think we talked about it mm. off air. Like, that lineup is not a buy-worthy lineup, right? So they're going to try no. and offload some of this pitching that's pretty strong even outside of Alcantara, right? And I think Jose, or, uh, Pablo Lopez would be a, a great find for St. Louis. Yes, he's right-handed. You might argue that they need a left-handed pitcher. But you might be able to get Lopez for not as much. Like, if like if I'm going to offer you this package right now, I think that Brand, uh, Brendan Schaefer has offered this package up on Twitter a couple of times. Alec Burleson, Pablo Lopez, straight up. Uh, from the Cardinals standpoint, are you saying no to that trade? Oh, absolutely not. Alec Burrell, he's not even really part of the plan. (laughs) So if you could get somebody like Lopez in return for him, by by all means, I I will take that trade right away. No problem whatsoever. (laughs) I'd be shocked if the Marlins would accept something like that. But again, we don't know what it's going to take because that first domino hasn't fallen yet. I feel like teams will have to wait till the, uh, Luis Castillo gets moved because that will kind of set the bar. And then the, the pecking order goes from there. Um, I, but if I, if I had to choose what, if you had Pablo Lopez or Madison Bumgarner, which one would you want in a, in a trade deal? Not worried about what you're giving up just as that player itself. That, 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 that is a tough one. I, I probably go Madison Bumgarner, maybe a little bit more of a proven commodity. You know, if, if I had, mm-hmm. you know, had to choose one of those two. And I saw somebody make the point on Twitter as well and, you know, doom scrolling on different replies through Twitter that Pablo Lopez has never thrown this amount of innings in his life. Or he's getting to that threshold, right? So you don't know what he's going to do mm-hmm. after it. Some people could make the same argument for Andre Pallante, right? So I'm taking more proven. I'm taking Bumgarner. But again, everybody, the point is you can't make one trade in this starting pitching market and consider that a success, especially from the Cardinals' standpoint. If they get busy with the 
pitching, they're going to make more than one move, in my opinion, or at least they need to. They should. They should. Uh, other names that are thrown out there, Chad Cool from the Rockies, Jordan Lyles from the Orioles, Brad Keller in Kansas City. So uh, those are some of the starting rotation guys. As far as the bullpen goes, um, you know, the Pirates – usually are in sell mode and I have friends who are Pittsburgh fans and I just am like, I wish you guys just wouldn't sell for once and just try it out for a couple of years. Right. But uh, just cause I don't know. I just feel like they just give up on these guys a little too early, but uh, you know, according to reports like David Bednar, who was an all-star, he's somebody that could be had. Uh, you've got uh Joe Mantiply from the, the diamondbacks also an all-star. Do you, could you package something together to get Bumgarner and Mantiply out of Arizona? Uh, you mentioned uh, in Detroit, there were the Tariq Skubal, uh, Michael Fulmer is somebody th- whose name's popped up. Also, Andrew Chafin in, uh, in Detroit, uh, Daniel Bard and Alex Colome from the Rockies, Matt Moore of the Rangers. These are some other bullpen pieces that could be had. What will it take? We don't know yet. Um, just to kind of switch it up and go back to uh, Washington. I, I'm just, you know, just exploring on that that website, the trade values website, uh, in a deal for Soto. Say you, you know, Patrick Corbin is included, and there's a, is there a way to pry other arms from Washington? Now, remember, Washington's not a good team, so why would you want all these guys off their squad? Well, because you need arms for St. Mm-hmm. Louis right now. So, Paola Espino, uh, Victor Arano, Steve Ciszek, some other names that could be not only in the bullpen, but also in your starting rotation, just uh, other guys that you can count on and rely on to be there every fifth day. So maybe that's another route that you go with, but these are some of the names that are out there. None of them all that sexy. We know that, Mm -hmm. but you got to have somebody, don't you? Not all that sexy, but if you package multiple of these together, then it gets sexy, right? Like, like Mm -hmm. if you can not like maybe not revamp the whole team, but you can, you know, Maybe when you can influx this this new talent right on on the mound, and then this team starts looking pretty good, right? So, I think that there are a lot of routes the Cardinals could go. Let us know on YouTube comments, Twitter DMs, email all the all the, all the whole nine yards what you think the Cardinals should do this trade deadline or what they will do. What pitchers that, that we've named that you like? What pitchers names that you don't like that we've named? Let us know. We want to talk with you guys as well. So, it'll be fascinating, JD. But again, they if the Cardinals get active. They need to be really active on the pitching front. If they get Soto and Corbin, then you can live with one trade, right? And then we can talk about the win or loss of their trade deadline. But if they're going to stay exclusively in the starting pitching market or in the bullpen market on the trade deadline, they've got to be busy bees. Agreed. Agreed. All right, Lucas, tell us about Bet Online. Uh, fastest, easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. You're, you're a betting guy. What, what do you think about Bet Online, my friend? I wasn't a betting guy before Bet Online. I will say that Bet Online has helped make me become a betting guy. BetOnline.net is indeed the fastest and easiest way to check out on all your favorite betting needs. As JD said, you can find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. With NFL coming up, you have incredible amount of lines to predict or wins, loss totals, preseason camps, everything. Find reviews and news of every league, MLB included in that, NBA, NHL, esports, combat sports, and even golf. Make that sport a little more entertaining to watch if you put some money on it. It continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports covering wagering information. Whether it's live in-game betting, scores, or podcasts, they have everything you need. They have you covered. So head over to Bet Online today. Check it out. You will not regret it. You can also use your mobile device if you're on the go and learn more about the action happening today because with all the action that is everywhere else, Bet Online is where the game starts. Now to switch back to Juan Soto talk. Uh, we, we've covered the pitching, and we've had a lot of people who are like, talk about pitchers. That's what we want to hear about. We know the Soto stuff. All right, well, we just gave you a bunch of, of different names pitching-wise, but let's get back to the Soto thing because it's the talk of Major League Baseball. Sorry, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a huge subject right now. Uh, going through things, reports have speculated. They continued that the Cardinals are the top spot to land Juan Soto because of all of the – different things they have major league ready talent guys who are already up in the pros. And then of course the prospects a uh, name that's starting to get kicked around a little bit more than maybe we thought would uh, a couple of weeks ago is that of Nolan Gorman. He could be a bigger piece of this. Uh, your thoughts on Nolan Gorman heading into a trade for uh, for Juan Soto, considering that, you know, a few weeks ago, everybody was pretty high on him. And since then he's, he's, 
kind of kind of regressed a little bit, I would say, at the plate. Defensively, he's still been doing good. He's been solid, but at the plate, a lot of strikeouts, Lucas. And the famous words of Michael Scott, oh, how the turn tables. You know, a couple weeks ago, we're talking <laughs> about this guy as a rookie of the year, you know, favorite. We, we that, you know, At least I was thinking of him as a rookie of the year favorite. He was hitting home runs everywhere. But what it comes down to, really, for me, J.D., is that is Nolan Gorman, like, are you more confident in Nolan Gorman or Jordan Walker? And can you convince Washington to take Gorman over Walker? Like, which one are you hire? Right? Like, like, is Gorman going to be a sell low kind of player, right? Because you're going to have to sell him low, but you can still market it as you just go through a slump, he'll be fine. And you have other options behind him to play second base for the time being, whether you call back up. Paul DeYoung, who's been raking at the minor leagues, or at least with, with some power, he's been hitting the ball pretty well. Or you go with Brendan Donovan, who has been struggling. But this comes from a report from Jeff Jones uh, of the Gorman package that it's an intriguing one. You know, what would you rather? I think it comes down to either Gorman or Walker, or Gorman versus Win in the trade package. Right? You're going to have to give up some combination of those guys. And if you can, you know, convince Washington to, to take Gorman and to live with the strikeouts. Maybe that, that that's a plus, and you get Gorman away. It's hard because we've been waiting for Gorman for so long, right, to come through this through this system, change positions for the Cardinals, you know, all these different things. But at the end of the day, does it make more sense to trade Gorman or Walker? You could say Gorman, and that way you keep your top prospect. And that, no matter what the combination is, JD, that would be a fleece if the Cardinals were able to keep their top prospect. Yeah, uh, Gorman. You've seen the power, nine home runs in 53 games, but uh, since June 1st, hitting 193 with a 266 on base percentage. And uh, as I mentioned, the strikeouts, 51 strikeouts in his last 154 plate appearances. You knew he was going to swing and miss a lot, and you were ready to accept that. But then when you see it happen two or three times a, a game in situations where you were you need you need somebody who's going to just put the ball in play. I, I find myself watching these games and, I'm like, there's just moments where I'm like, dude, all you got to do is put it in play and the runners move over or run scores. And then the untimely strikeout happens, whether it's Gorman or Sosa or Kisner or whoever at the bottom there. And it just it's infuriating to watch where it's just like, just put it in play, guys. It's all you got to do. You don't have to swing for the fence here. So um, moving Gorman, I, I, I. I don't have any problems moving any of these guys because Walker is still an unknown. I, I, there, it's been too many times that it's happened in the past where somebody's supposed to be a great prospect and it doesn't pan out. And, you know, the Cardinals have gotten criticism over the years for maybe hanging on to their prospects too long or valuing them a little too high where they don't make a move for somebody who is already proven at the major league level. Do I think Gorman's going to be a bust? No, I don't think that. But if I'm able to get one of the best left-handed bats in the game by putting him in there and then uh, perhaps moving Tommy Edmond back over to second base and finding a, another shortstop, whether it is like a Paul DeYoung, hopefully he doesn't do what he was doing before he got sent down to AAA. But I don't know. I, I it's, it's just hard to not include anybody into a trade for somebody like Soto. It just makes it very, very difficult. But again... If pitching's what needs, if you think you can get by with this offense and uh, you can get the the pieces needed to fix this rotation and put the bullpen back together, then I think you still have to go that route. I, I just, as much as it sounds cool to have Juan Soto on your team, if your pitching is still terrible, it's not going to do you any good. You'd have to, you'd have to win in slugfest like last night against Toronto, and I, I, I just. I, personally, that's just not the type of baseball I like. I, I, I don't, I don't foresee that as being the best way to win a championship. No, we see it all the time. Good pitching often beats good hitting, right? Like I would much mm. rather have an ace in October than a slugger, right? Yeah. Uh, just because of you know, you could say, oh, it gets colder in certain. Areas. No, I just think in general, no matter if it's 100 degrees or 50 degrees, more times than not, good pitching is going to beat good hitting. Mm -hmm. and that that's just the name of the game and how it how it goes. It's the reason that every team needs an ace. Right, and that's the reason that we've talked about so much today. The Cardinals needing pitching help in the rotation and the bullpen. Every team, JD, every single team will be looking to add arms. Every yeah. team, 
Every playoff team, I should say. So it'll be fascinating. I think that the only way I think Gorman gets moved is in a deal for Juan Soto. Like, I'm not giving up Nolan Gorman for a bum Gardner, Syndergaard, Montes, etc. right? Right. Like, he's only going, for, in my opinion, in a, in a Soto package. That's it. Uh, but it'll, it'll be fascinating to, to see how it plays out because we're – it's six days now until that, that trade deadline kicks in. So it'll be fun to to stick with all the rumors, see what the pitching rumors the Colonels get in on, if they still stay in on Soto, if Soto's even moved. Trade deadline's coming up fast, everybody. It's going to be here before we know it. Yes, it will. So uh, we'll keep you posted on everything that has to do with uh, any moves that the Cardinals make as of right now. Same guys are going to be on the on the team in uh, at Rogers Center tonight. We'll be on the field that you saw last night. So uh, we'll have Adam Wainwright taking the mound. It'll be Kevin Gosman for Toronto. Going to be a tough one to win tonight. Gosman's pretty tough, man. Absolutely, and he dominated the Cardinals last time. So could be a tall task, but why not go out there and, and get a win? You know, got to play the games. Yeah. Got to play the games. Yeah. That is true. All right, guys. Well, thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen. Now make your second listen to Locked On MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. For Lucas, I'm JD. Thanks for hanging with us. You're the best fans in baseball for a reason, and we'll see you next time on Locked On Cardinals.